the trucks and tractors. I'm gonna yell in case you can't hear me. This How's is like it going? the earliest I've planted ever in my life. Yeah, I was gonna say this is pretty early. Uh, I think there was one year we were like the 24th or 25th, but to be the 23rd of April. This is like super early. Um, we planted beans the last couple years because one we couldn't get a fertilizer, or we got one field that's all sand, uh -huh. so um, nothing around here would go. Okay. So we headed up to the rock because it's all just sand. Yeah, yeah. So that would go, but yeah, oh yeah. I've written the book on untraditional farming. <laughs> you know, what do you try to do? Whatever I can. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, don't take the seeds out of the ground. That's <laughs> Go ahead, steal a couple. There's I, like I'm 40, just, Yeah, out I'm here. just teasing you. You're fine. Don't worry. Oh, there's more than The 40. boys are digging all the corn out of the ground. <laughs> We're out here planting at the first field. Eric sprung a leak. You just clip it shorter and yep. clamp it back on. Yeah. So Adeline just asked, Uncle Eric keeps stopping and raising the corn planter up over the ends over here and Adeline asked why he keeps stopping. So basically for anyone who doesn't know how planting works, in our case because we have an eight row corn planter, we do between two and three headland passes which is two to three perimeter passes. So that would be what, eight, 16 to 24 rows that run perimeter of the field. Right now, Uncle Eric is getting close to the end of this field, and so he's hitting the headlands. So every time he plants in a straight line and hits those end rows, he stops planting, raises up the planter, because it makes it easier for when you combine, so you can just follow the rows. Because then when you combine, you do the headlands first, so the combines, you'll always see them. They run around the perimeter a few times first, taking off all the headlands. Then they go back and forth and they just start buzzing through the fields. So that's what Uncle Eric's doing right now. Make sense? Or did you, you just totally, you weren't even listening? No, I was listening. <laughs> it just didn't make sense. So you have the perimeter of your field. You go around the perimeter of the field a few times because you cannot, like you physically couldn't plant the whole field if you just went back and forth because you need room to turn around. So you couldn't actually drive all the way yet to the end, turn around and come back without losing some acreage of planted land. So that's why you just perimeter around a few times first and then he plants inside that new perimeter that he made. Okay. Does that make sense now? Yes. Okay, I, I, I hope... You just said that. Oh, okay. 
kids these days. They know everything. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it's actually been 24 hours since we talked last, believe it or not. So the boys found some kittens up at Nana and Grandpa's. The funny thing about these kittens is the mama comes with a story. The mama cat was given to me by a co-worker years ago. The mama cat escaped. Actually, we found out she didn't escape. Somebody let her out. Anyway, long story goes, the cat was taken to the shelter at the town that I worked in. This shelter decided to give the cat shots and a bunch of other stuff for it. I ended up finding out that somebody let the cat out and all this stuff, right? Who let the cat out of the bag? Well, who let the cat out of the kennel? So this cat goes to the kennel. They do this stuff to it. I call the kennel, hey, it's my cat. Can I go come get the cat? Yeah, you can. So I drive there after work, go to get the cat, find out that they did all this work. Oh, by the way, you can have the cat back, but it's gonna cost you this much money. And I'm like, okay. The kids' cat just happened to uh, maybe get ran over by something. So I felt bad, all right, we gotta replace the cat. So I pay the money to get the cat back. Uh, we're at Nana and Grandpa's, right? You're wondering, how did this cat end up at Nana and Grandpa's? Well, so this cat, I bring it to my house. I was told by my coworker that is the nicest cat ever. I bring it to my house after I had to pay for the cat then. And I let, <laughs> let it out of the kennel. And it immediately ran away up into a tree. It wouldn't come down, couldn't come down for nothing. Then the cat just bailed on us, it left. Well, come to find out like a week later, it came down to Nana and Grandpa's house, which is a little like a mile and a half, mile and a quarter, mile and a half away, and has been here ever since. That was probably four years ago. So this cat's been here ever since, but it gets funnier because my coworker said this is the nicest cat ever. It plays with his kids all the time and everything. Um, no, I'm sorry, that, <laughs> that's not correct. Uh, this cat hisses at everyone all the time, has always hissed at everyone. So, uh, this cat's name is Socks, somewhere in this garage. Um, oh, she's back there? So, so she had a litter of kittens. And the boys, the boys just found the kittens, which they're super cute little kittens. But they can freak litter <laughs> but, but the kittens hiss at everything just like the mama. <laughs> Also, if you hold them by the tummy, they'll the track. Yeah, they have really sharp Aww. nails. Once yeah. They they yeah, don't super smell. sharp. Can you pick one up or not? No. No? Too scary? Yeah, because I know they will Also, they will be claw into your kin. Ooh, that would hurt. But you guys still, you still want to come pet them? Yeah. Even though they could claw into your skin. <laughs> have they done that yet? No. No, that's good. They haven't put, done it to me. Okay, good, good. They just put their nails out at me. Oh, they put your nails out, okay. Yeah. But they're so cute. Mm -hmm. Kitty, kitty. <laughs> the planter's all ready to rock. This is the corn planter right here. So what happened was on my farm, Eric ran it all night long until I believe around 4 a.m. They finished planting my whole farm. And then, but the problem is, on the front of this tractor, there is a liquid fertilizer tank. It shoots fertilizer into the rows before the planter covers it back up after it spits the seed in. What happened was they ran the tank completely empty on it. So Eric had to bleed the whole system. So he ran through uh, all of the heads, rebled the whole system, got it all going again. The elevator came and put dry fertilizer down on the entire farm. I want to say it's about 120 acres um, on my in-laws farm that's that's currently gonna go into corn um, so we're just getting ready to go head out and put some corn in the ground oh and uh, Louie she's getting worked on it runs and drives it's almost there all right Jim's climbing up into the corn planter right now he's gonna head back to the field and start putting corn in the ground
One of the hoses leaking again. Right there. How's it going otherwise? Good. That's, that's done over there. Um, we'll have to start over here then. How much rain though? I mean, it's going to get sticky. Yeah. Um, I'm going to check seed. He just wants to spray you. <laughs> We're older and wiser than that. We'll drive behind Yeah, that looks soft. Hop on, we'll go catch up to him. Alright. Make sure he's not leaking. Yep. Alright, it's raining a decent amount right now. Oh, my GoPro looks fantastic. Raining a decent amount right now. It's going to stop the planting for a little bit. But I'm, I'm guessing the rain's gonna stop and we'll head back out here.